Okay, grab it here again. A little unbox unboxing to do. So this is a Netgear uh, GS 116E. They called it. It's a G. No, oh, it was G E G. No, that's actually GS 116E. Nearly got it right. Good thing I'm not in marketing. Anyway, let's dig into it. Let's see what it looks like. Now this is a, a managed switch. You know, four four man's level three switch. You know, I've got enough time to buy the other stuff, which I don't. But and um, my thought is that I'm actually redoing or creating a gigabit network infrastructure in my house that will have two separate um, sections. The idea is that I have my internet router firewall and um, I'll take the um, gigabit network from that, plug it into this one, and then I'll have two virtual networks um, going in, in two different sections of the house. And then through this I'll be able to manage quality of service and um, the VLAN setup and, and some small stuff. I mean, it's not a, not a very uh, comprehensive uh, managed switch, but at least it's affordable. So it's just... And then the other idea is that the, uh, I want to uh, offload the switching from the router that I have. So it will only deal with the um, gig, you know, gigabit coming, coming, coming and going from the internet. And, uh, and then house internal traffic will... Um, will uh, be, um, confined to this switch and not be um, going how to involve the root. So anyway, it has the um, wall mount stuff. And they, like most Netgear switches, they're quite heavy and you can't really communicate that on the camera. And lots of switches nowadays are made of very thin plastic and just you connect a network cable to it and it pulls it onto the floor. But the, these things, once you put the pads on, you put it on the table, it is actually going to stay off the table. It won't fall down, which is actually a nice. Well, that's one of these normal plug-in power supplies. Otherwise, it is just plug and play. So you can just connect your cables into it and, and you're done with it. You don't actually have to configure anything, but you have the option to um, set up um, quality of service and, and VLANs. I think that's actually quite nice. So, um, this here comes uh, with a management software. I thought we could actually just have a little bit of a look at the management features that this provides. Ah, okay, now we're going to have a look at the um, admin application. So let's have a look. So it's called ProSafe Plus Configuration Utility. And, um, and basically you just download this and install it and then you run it. And then it, if you have the switch connected on your network, then it will come up here. It's in the list. Um, and then if click on IP settings. Now this this is where it gets a bit tricky because um, by default, if I understand correctly, this utility communicates using the uh, MAC address, so it'll find it on the network, whatever IP address it has. But the default out of the box IP address is that it's statically configured, so you, you know, you'll never be able to access it um, with its IP address. So um, I just basically, in my case, I, I, you can in, um, configure it using a static IP address if you like and allocate, but I didn't bother. I just said, okay, enable DHCP. The thing is that this finds it on the network, whatever IP address it picks up, the utility, I mean, the ProSafe, ProSafe uh, uh, can, uh, plus configuration utility, so it, it doesn't actually care what, um, what IP it has. So, DH, so go in here and enable DHC then um, uh, you're okay for most cases. And then we have to get 
get out of here. So I have to run it on uh, that monitor on that side because I can't have it on the same screen where I'm um, actually making this video. So <laughs> oh, this has absolutely nothing to do with this demonstration, but I have a 4K monitor and a um, yeah, not so 4K monitor and when I move the screen between the two then it locks up the computer that, oh, yeah, side effects of computing so I have to run the I have to run this ProSafe it's nothing to do with the, this ProSafe utility it's more to do with the um, yeah, something to do with XSplit I, I would imagine but anyway let's move on um, then you actually have several of these um, tabs that you can then select. So let's have a look at the... No, we need to select the one that's active. Okay, that's strange. Why can't I access it? This is an, uh, another illogical. Okay, so now you've installed the software, you've configured the DHCP address, and then um, well, let's say we do that. We do this. We get the refresh so that it's, it shows it. So that okay, so then now it's here. But to be able to get to the options, you need to enter a password, and the way you do that is you click on that and then you say apply and then you can give the password and then it enables access to our oh, it, like so okay I mean I think this pro safe utility would need a little bit of work for, at least for more stuff you actually do have an option to uh, have a web based access to the um, switch also but I haven't looked into that I think this is uh, actually better with this even if, with its glitches so anyway, um, so let's have a look at this. Um, here you have a, a nice um, display of everything, all your, all your ports, and if they are connected or not, and if they're connected, then it gives you the link speed. So, so as I'm running now, mostly gigabit. So this is a device that's connected directly to the switch that doesn't have it, it doesn't support gigabit network, but that's expected. So. Then. If you if you're running a network and you want to have one gigabit link speeds and like I, I was having previously, if you look at my um, one gigabit networking videos, then my problem was that I wasn't getting the correct link speed on the on the segments of my network. So it was very useful to have the switch because it could tell you wh what link speed has it selected. So you have like auto, or then you can actually force it to um, different modes like uh, 10, 100, and then um, if you haven't. If you then set it to auto, we'll try for um, one gig. So here I can actually see the, all, all my um, network segments, except for the one, the, the device that actually doesn't have one gigabit um, network interface. Uh, um, yeah, that's showing 100. Uh, and then, of course, it gives you the port status. And we kind of look at it. And then in maintenance, you can. Um, can do a device reboot, factory de you can return it to factory depots, you can upgrade the firmware, but that's file based, so you actually have to have a file available, and then you just upload it. And then they recommend that you're directly connected to the switch with an Ethernet cable. And then save configuration or restore configuration. That's quite a standard stuff. Monitoring, so you can actually see the um, traffic that's gone, both sent and received on each port. And if there's any CRC errors, uh, mirroring. Uh, this is to, I think it was to connect more than one um, port together to be able to um, try and have like more than one network cable between two different switches. Not really a likely scenario in, in a um, home network. 
Cable tester. Ah, I don't know. Tested this even when I was having my issue. Didn't really turn out anything. But the problem is my... My issue had to do with um, dampening of the network signal, not an absolute uh, breakage in the cable. So I think this might actually be more for if you have a mechanical break in your cable. So then you can actually see that. Then we have some uh, multicast uh, IGMP snooping options. Uh, then you have the v VLAN ID enabled for that also, so I just enabled it. And then validate the headers and block unknown multicast addresses. And, uh, so you, you can choose to use the same settings if you like, it's just kind of normal stuff. Oh, loop detection, also not very common home networks, that you have actually succeeded in connecting your chain of switches in a loop. <laughs> and th this will actually block that traffic so it won't start like, like round-robin um, sending the packets off to each other. Uh, I don't know what power saving could be for. I don't really understand that. Um, Oh, short circuit in the brain. I did look this up. Oh, okay, now I figured out I've messed the two definitions up. The, the port mirroring was that you can select like one or many um, ports and then you can select the destination port to send it to, so you actually end up with a copy of all packets on one, on, on one port. And then, um, lag, um, that, that's the one where you actually um, can um, connect switches together with multiple cables. So that's nothing that... Well, as I said, I, I doubt the one would use any of those two features on, on now the home homey network that I'm right. Okay, and then we move on. And we have a look at VLAN. And this is the um, configuration screen for virtual LANs. And I didn't really understand, I, I must honestly say, I, I didn't understand what they meant with basic um, port based VLANs um, set up. So I, I just. <laughs> I just um, disabled it and said, oh, to hell with it, I want to use the um, advanced. Because the advanced made much more sense to me, at least. Because here you have a very clear, um, a clear setup. So, um, so here you, you set up your, um, uh, your um, VLAN identifier, or actually you, you select the VLAN identifier. In my case, I'm using the three so they've hard-coded a whole set of them here, so you can go up to 16, which is the number of ports, so you can have a VLAN on each port, that doesn't make much sense. Uh, anyway, you, so I, I used 1 to 3, and then um, what you basically do is you say, okay, uh, on VLAN 1 I have these ports connected, and then on 2 I have these ports connected, and then on 3 I have these ports connected. So that's just my layout, and then you can actually see the, um, the layout better if you look at the membership. So this makes much more sense. So you can see what ports are, are part of um, VLAN ID 1 and 2 and 3, and, and the idea behind this is that I, I, well, this this could come out. I mean, in my home network, I basically have a more businessy side of the network in my house, and then I have a more like um, civilian use. <laughs> area so and I don't want those messing with each other so I, I, I created two VLANs and then this is the the top one is reserved for the internet router and, and, 
on any, any other devices connected directly to that. And um, this way, I can actually um, uh, I can I can prevent this network the the virtual LAN three from directly accessing the virtual LAN two, even if they have the known IP. If they know the IP address, they still can't connect connect with devices across this boundary, but they can still go out to the internet. So then I, for example, can I have uh, file share systems and stuff on the more corporate network and then they can't be accessed from the more civilian side of the operation. And then the final remaining is uh, quality of assurance. And then I just said that, okay, run it based on the standard. I didn't want to start setting up port based. Of course, you might have that if you have certain scenarios. You might want to actually control it based on the port. And then there's a quality of service. You can set up rate limits. I didn't really see. Uh, you might want to limit your son's ability to use the network. <laughs> Broadband filtering. I didn't look into this, uh, or I would I would assume that it's probably port based. Uh, you can say that you want to block certain ports from going through. Uh, I mean, I, we, this the, one has to see the one doesn't actually try and use fi functionality in the switch that's already provided by the um, uh, the um, the firewall router you have already to connect to the internet. So you know duplicate the settings here. So anyway, that was a short overview of the configure. As I said, there was an option to access it through the uh, through just using a web browser, but I didn't bother with that. And then th there was those few tricks of getting this up and running. And, um, yeah, and, and it's actually been our calendar time. The switch has been running for a couple of weeks now, servicing the um, virtual lands as I have expected, and I haven't noticed any I haven't noticed any issues with it, so I'm a happy customer from that perspective. Anyway, if you like this video and found it informative, consider subscribing, hit the bell icon for more, there's definitely going to be more. And, um, you know, if there are other people interested in networking gear uh, for household, mainly household use, then um, tell them about this and keep an eye on the channel. And um, I'll see you in the next one.